Hello everybody and welcome to a new Plan Zoo video where, after much request, I will be ranking all the current DLCs that are available for Planet Zoo from 2019 to 2023, as we have not had any for 2024 just yet. So, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So the first pack that came out for Planet Zoo was the Deluxe Edition, which released alongside the base game coming with three animals, the Komodo Dragon, Thompson's Gazelle, and the Pygmy Hippopotamus. All great animals in their own right, but it is only these three, so there's no other animals to really go alongside them. And when you compare it to Jurassic World Evolution 2's and Jurassic World Evolution's Deluxe Edition that came with five creatures, it is somewhat, but it is a bit smaller than that. And I love all these animals, particularly the Pygmy Hippo and Komodo Dragon. They are personal favourites of mine. But it is not really comparable to many of the other DLCs that have a lot more variety and, namely, much more interesting creatures than some of these, as they do, they do share resemblances with many of the base game's animals, with Komodo Dragon being similar to a Noah monitor, Pygmy Hippo being similar to a regular Hippo, and Thompson's Gazelle being similar to animals like Springbok. Now, they're all good animals, but I do have to say this is probably my least favourite pack. It came with essential animals, but it is my bottom pick. Yeah, so it's down in the C tier, because I didn't think any packs deserve the D tier, as they're all pretty good. Uh, in their own rights, so I only went from S to C on the tier list. Next up we have Arctic Pack, the first proper DLC released for Planet Zoo. And it suffers from the same thing that the Deluxe Edition suffers from, having less animals than many of the current packs, and many animals that are very similar to existing ones. So the animals of this pack were the Polar Bear, the Reindeer, Arctic Wolf, and Doll Sheep. Now, they are exciting animals in their own rights. Now, don't get me wrong, I love all these animals, but this is how it is. It, it, it's not my favourite pack. I do love the the Nordic themes and all that sort of other stuff that came with it, but when I compare it to some of the other packs that have been released, it's probably my... It, it's towards the bottom, unfortunately. Coming above the Deluxe Edition. South America was the next pack after this. Now, I'm not going in order. This is just how... These are based on my preferences. So, South America released with the Llama, the Giant Anteater, the Colombian White-Faced Capuchin Monkey, the Jaguar, and the Red-Eyed Tree Frog. All great animals, but it could have been a lot better. There was a lot of potential here, but it wasn't really used to its fullest. Now, I love all these animals. I don't think I need to keep stating that, but... I, I'm just not a, a fan of the whole roster here. Now, the Giant Anteater, Jaguar, and Red-Eyed Tree Frog are very obvious choices, but the Llama and Colombian White-Faced Capuchin, they could have been swapped out for, I think, some more interesting choices. And I do like the, the theme that came in this pack, but it was somewhat more tunified than I would prefer. If we were to get a Central America pack, like, in the next few months, if that were to be the case, a more realistic Aztec Incan sort of theme would be pretty good. Well, Aztec Mine, as we're talking about Central America rather than South America. And I think this was based on Incan themes. So um, if we were to get Aztec and Mayan, I wouldn't be too fussed. And I think that would be pretty cool. But yeah, South America comes in at bot th third to last. <laughs> now 
Now, this one might be a bit controversial for many people, as I know there are lots of fans of the Twilight Pack, but unfortunately, I'm not one of them. And this is one of the more lackluster packs, as I, I was expecting a bit more from it. And in that sense, we have the Raccoon, the Red Fox, the Common Wombat, Striped Skunk, and the Egyptian Fruit Bat. Now, the Egyptian Fruit Bat was game-changing, and Wombat is a very cool animal in its own right, but the three others... Now, I love Raccoons. Raccoons are one of the animals I would have kept if I had to change this DLC, but the Red Fox and Striped Skunk don't offer that much in, in comparison. I have not really used them in any zoos. I haven't actually used the Raccoon in any zoos just yet, but... Yeah, it's not my favorite pack, I'll, I'll say that. And the Halloween theme d didn't really sell it for me, but I do understand why a lot of people like it. But it comes in at the fourth to last year. <laughs> Next up is 2023's Arid Animal Pack. Now, this pack is an interesting one. Now, I do like it. It is It covers the arid biome very well. And having said that, we have the Dromedary Camel as our flagship, followed by the Adax, the Dharma Gazelle, Somali Wild Ass, the Black Rhinoceros, African Crested Porcupine, Sand Cat, and the Desert Horned Viper. This is my least favorite of the animal packs, simply because there's not that greater amount of variety. Now, you might be thinking that, oh, what's he talking about? There's a lot of variety here. But five of the animals are all hoofstock. They're all undulates. Whereas other animal packs that you'll find have got like a habitat reptile, a primate, or any sort of other group of animals here. And there are plenty of other choices that could have been added here. Animals like yellow-footed rock wallabies, honey badgers, hammer drives, baboons. There, there was a lot of choice here, but um, they, were, they only went for a select amount of animals here. Uh, but I do like all these animals. I think they're very well made, and uh, they're some of my favorite looks in the game. I just feel like this pack could have been a bit more diverse in its animal selection. And so it comes in at B tier, but... Uh, that That is a compliment for the Arid Animal Pack. I know a lot of people really didn't like how there were so many hoofstock, and I can agree with you, but I'm not really one to hate on animals, so I, I like this idea. <laughs> Next up is the most recent of the animal packs, the Eurasia animal pack. The only reason it's so low is because I wouldn't use a lot of these animals that were featured in this pack. There are at least three that I would use. So the animals in question are the Wisent, the Wild Boar, the Wolverine, Moot Swan, Saiga, Sloth Bear, Tarkin, and the Herman's Tortoise. Now, I know a lot of European players really benefit from this pack, and a few American players too, as the Wolverine exists on both continents, and Sloth Bears and Tarkins are pretty prevalent. Now, when I say that, the Sloth Bear, Tarkin, and Wolverine are the only animals in the pack I would really use. Moot Swans are, are somewhat game-changing, as you get your first waterfowl in the game, so I think that's a really big step in the right direction towards more bird diversity. But... It's not an animal I've actually ever seen. I've never seen a moot swan. I'm I'm from Australia. I'm used to black swans. But um, it's more of an aesthetic ambient species rather than an animal I would apply to a, a regular zoo. Whereas sloth bears, tarkins, and wolverines, I would. Wild boars, they're not exactly the kind of animal I would consider a zoo animal. Wisent have a great conservation story, but I... Don't I, w I don't really see any way I can use them. And Saiga only exists in a select amount of zoos. And 
I don't really know how to use them except for like a wild conservation project build. And the Herman's tortoise is very good for some reptile houses, so I guess I would use that as well. But you raise your arm pack. Comes in the B tier above the Arrow. <laughs> we have the Europe pack, another pack where I don't use a lot of the animals. I probably only use one quite frequently. So we have the European fallow deer, that being the animal I use the most in this pack, followed by Eurasian lynx, alpine ibex, European badger, and the fire salamander. And yeah, I, I just don't use a lot of these animals, but I really did like how the theme was handled emphasizing a lot of different cultures from the European continents. And yeah, I, I really like that cultural emphasis and how these animals were presented. I, I think that was very cool. But the Euro pack is not really a, a pack I use too often. And I was really only going to start using it if I was to build a Eurasian animal pack zoo. I was thinking about it, but I didn't really have the time on my hands to do it. So the Euro pack is yeah, it's, it's one of the lesser scenery packs in my personal opinion, and I know a lot of people really like it, but it, it doesn't really do it for me, unfortunately. So it comes in above the Eurasia Animal Pack here. <laughs> Next we have the Wetlands Animal Pack, a fairly celebrated animal pack in the community as it came with a lot of good animals. We have the Capybara, a very highly requested animal at the time, followed by the Platypus, an animal that I used quite often, the Wild Water Buffalo, the Nile Lechwe, Asian Small Clawed Otter, an animal I know I use a lot, the Red Crown Crane, the Spectacle Cayman, and the Danube Crested Newt. The only reason this pack is so low is because the animal choices, I love them all. Don't get me wrong, but I think there are some better packs out there. And I know a lot of people didn't really find too much benefit from the platypus as outside of Australia, the platypus only exists at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Wild water buffalo aren't really found in captivity, but their domestic cousin is. Now, let's worry a critically endangered antelope that I was, I was very happy to see you get some representation. Spectacle Cayman, I think, is a great crocodilian to represent wetlands. And the Red Crown Crane, I know it has a lot of um, spiritual significance in a lot of East Asian countries. But I feel like instead of it, we could have gone something like a shoe bill as something a bit more unique. But that's just my personal opinion. I use a few of the animals in this pack quite frequently, so it is a bit higher. Coming in at A tier, so I did like the selection of animals and I think it really deserves its place. <laughs> We have the Australia pack, one of my personal favorite packs as it represents my home country and a lot of animals in it I've seen quite frequently and use in zoos often. So these would be the red kangaroo, the dingo, the southern cassowary, koala and eastern blue tongue lizard. All these animals are great in my personal opinion and fit the pack very well. However, instead of the dingo, as much as I love dingoes, I, I love seeing them, the Tasmanian devil would have been a great choice here. And since it's more of a rustic desert or grassland theme, instead of the cassowary, I think an emu would have fit here better. But hey, we got them in the end. But I, I think the, the scenery has, has its niche. It, it's, it's interesting, I, I, I will say that. But I do like the cultural elements that were blended into the scenery of this pack. And yeah, it, it's a great pack. Don't get me wrong, I use the animals quite a lot. but it doesn't really stack up to some of the others later on. 
but it is certainly still good enough to earn it an A place on the list. <laughs> Next, we have the Africa pack. Now, the Africa pack is a very useful pack, and uh, it's probably one of the best packs you can get for Planet Zoo in terms of its value in terms of the species in this pack. The species in question are the African penguin, the meerkat, the fennec fox, the southern white rhinoceros, and the sacred scarab beetle. Meerkat, white rhino, fennec fox, and African penguin I use readily in my zoo builds. And meerkats are just quintessential to every zoo that you see. So it, it's a must-have pack, and I really do like the animal selections, but it, it is a pack that, given that it came out in the pack, in, in the same year, I mean, that we started getting animal packs, this kind of pack covering Africa, it really would have served well to have an animal pack instead of a scenery pack. Don't get me wrong, the scenery is phenomenal in this pack. Very heavy Moroccan and Egyptian themes in this DLC. And I really did like how it was brought together. And it is one of my personal favorite scenery packs. Earning it the A spot. <laughs> Next we have the Aquatic Pack, a game-changing update and pack. So this pack added some of the more requested animals by the community, those being the penguin, the otter, Cuvia's dwarf caiman was a nice surprise and a very beautiful rendition of the animal. We had a grey seal and a diamondback terrapin, all great animals that represent the aquatic biome very well. Basically, if you're going to have an aquatic pack, you got to have a crocodilian of some kind, as they are one of the best adapted aquatic species, particularly semi-aquatic species. And it was great to finally get a true turtle, a seal, an otter, and a penguin. Now we do have variants of these now, but at the time, it was a first. And this pack is very good in terms of giving you some of the more diverse and more exciting animals to watch in your exhibits, as the way they move around is very enchanting, and I love watching it. But the scenery doesn't really hold up too well. Now, the scenery is good, and I use it quite a lot, but it's, it's got its niche, I will say that. But I like the animals, and I think that's enough to earn the aquatic pack an A spot. <laughs> showcasing some of the best animals from the region. We have the sun bear, the clouded leopard, the proboscis monkey, the newly remastered M Malayan tapia, the North Sulawesi bavarusa, the binturong, the dole, and the Malayan leaf insect, all of which are phenomenal animals that were brought together really well. Now, granted, two of the animals did require remasters, but they are great now and really up to the value of this pack as they are brought to their full potential. And yeah, I, I really liked this pack when it came out. I really do love using these animals in, in the zoos. However, Proboscis Monkey cannot really be used too often as I've got really no experience seeing one. I really need to get myself over to Singapore, see see them at the Singapore Zoo. But I... I'm more familiar with some of the other animals in terms of how I can build for them, and they're much easier to build for. The semi-aquatic monkey is an interesting it's, it's an interesting beast to tackle. Now, the sun bear and binturong and Malayan tapir are the ones out of the pack I use the most. Clouded leopard I do use quite frequently. Dolls I have a soft spot for, and babarusas I do like too. Leaf insect, not really so much. It's probably one of the main drawbacks of the pack. I would have loved a King Cobra. This was the perfect pack for it, but they unfortunately didn't go for it. And Proboscis Monkey, even though we did get them in the end, would have been great for a Gibbon instead, personally. 
But all the other animals are fantastic choices, and I am glad they picked the proboscis monkey, as they really do need attention being an endangered species. But the Southeast Asian animal pack falls into A tier, as a top of A tier. <laughs> Now we have the North America Animal Pack, one of the best put together animal packs I've seen. And the reason I say this is because I actually got five of the animals right when I was initially predicting what a North America Animal Pack could look like. And yeah, I, I'm really glad they went for the route they did, adding in the American alligator, the North American beaver, the moose, the California sea lion, the cougar, Arctic fox, black tailed prairie dog, and American bullfrog. Now, I would have preferred an alligator snapping turtle instead of a bullfrog, and it's the, the Arctic fox is really the only standout of the pack in terms of it doesn't really seem like it belongs in this kind of pack. They are from North America, but they're not exactly an animal that you associate with North America too often. Maybe a coyote would have been a good good replacement for us, but... Overall, the pack is stunning with great animals and yeah, it covered the North American continent very extensively and did it very well. Alligator I use the most out of this pack, California sea lion is the follows. But all the other animals I'm not too familiar with, but they really do fit well in this pack. That brings it into S tier for me personally. Now we have my personal favourite of the animal packs, the Grasslands Animal Pack. I just think it's a, a very fun pack full of great animals, those being the Nine-Bended Armadillo, the Maned Wolf, the Emu, the Caracal, the Red-Necked Wallaby, Striped Hyena, Blue Wildebeest, Cloudless Sulphur, European Peacock, Menelaus Blue Morpho, the Monarch Butterfly, and the Old World Swallowtail, a selection of five butterflies for the walkthrough exhibits. I use a lot of these animals. These, This is probably the animal pack I use the most of the animals in. I use the blue, blue wildebeest for savannah exhibits. I use the maned wolf quite often. I use the emu a lot and red-tailed, ta red, red red-necked wallaby quite often and caracal is another very often use for me. Striped hyena and nine-banded armadillo not so much, but they have, they're, they're well made. Granted, the striped hyena did require an, an initial redesign, but I, I think the pack is quite good now. And I realized I <laughs> I just realized I used the old Stratayena Zoopedia image there before its remaster. But um, yeah, but this pack is very good. And I, and I really enjoy building for it. And it was really cool to sort of recreate the trailer zoo from scratch. I only used reference images from the trailer to build a whole zoo. And I think I did pretty well. And it was a very fun experience to do. And so, it lands at S tier. Now, I know I've said previously that I love animal packs more than scenery packs. And I personally would like to see more animal packs. But I cannot deny that these top three scenery packs are my favorites of the whole game. They, they, I think they're just the best put together and some of the best looking in the game and very useful in terms of the pieces that they provide. So we start with the tropical pack at number three. So the animals of this pack are the Fusa, the Asian water monitor, the Lar Gibbon, the Red River hog, and the brown-throated sloth. 
all great animals. Now, I know a lot of people were hesitant on the Asian water monitor as a choice and would have preferred something else. But Frontier did a phenomenal job bringing this animal to life. I think it's, it is the best looking reptile in the game, in my personal opinion. The Red River Hog is phenomenally well made. Fusa as well is very well made. Largiven is stunning. And Brown Throated Sloth is probably my only drawback of the pack as they're only found in one zoo outside their native range. And a lot of people, including myself, would have preferred a Linnaeus' Two-Toed Sloth as you can put them in exhibits with more animals as you know what animals go with them in real zoos. But the scenery in this pack was very, very well made. I really loved it. We had Raphaelesia flowers. We had Attenborough's pitcher plants. We had all sorts of cool Indonesian temple-themed scenery. It, it's very well done. I really love the scenery of this pack. And, yeah, I cannot deny that this is probably one of my favorite scenery sets of the whole game. Landing it in S tier. <laughs> we have the conservation pack a very very good pack i i love this pack it, it is a very cool selection of animals the Shavolsky's horse the amor leopard the siamang scimitar horned oryx and the axolotl all animals including the axolotl are fan favorites and were highly requested at the time siamang is my personal favorite of the gibbons and i was so glad when i saw it and really happy how they brought the Siamang to life. Amor Leopard was a must-have for this pack. And same with the Scimitar Oryx and Shavolsky's horses. They're just symbols of conservation, and I really loved how Frontier paid attention to the community and added some highly requested animals all in one pack. And I really loved building with the scenery of this pack. You had all sorts of endangered plants of, of many kinds. You had sunflowers, tomato plants. It added a lot of backstage scenery, which really applies well to a realistic builder such as myself where i like building realistic zoos and all the backstage scenery really helps in creating that that atmosphere of a real zoo and all the scene all the scenery was made out of sustainable pieces so you had like 3d printed building pieces that i think is something that can really benefit the world a lot in terms of infrastructure and yeah, I, I love the addition of brachiation. When I saw that Gibbons were coming in this pack, I was so happy. I was probably one of the happiest I've been for a DLC in a long time. And yeah, that the excitement alone got me. This, this was going to be a top three pack for me. It always was going to be. Landing it in S tier. And so that leaves us with just one. The Oceania pack, one of the packs that came out in 2023, is my personal favourite of the packs. Now, I might be biased as I am a citizen of Oceania, living in Australia, and this pack really speaks to me personally. I, I really love all the animals, and I'm familiar with all the animals. I mean, I've never seen a kiwi, but I'm very familiar with them. <laughs> so the animals we got, my personal most wanted animal, the Tasmanian Devil, is my favorite Australian animal. I've met one, I've held one. They're just an amazing animal to have in the game at last, and Frontier nailed it. We also got the North Island Brown Kiwi, which Frontier also nailed. It is very well made. The Little Penguin as well was a pleasant surprise. I'm really happy to see the Little Penguin in the game. The Quokka. Now, a lot of people 
didn't really like the inclusion of the clock except until they found out how cute it was and i was hesitant at the start because i really did want a tree kangaroo instead and i was this way for a long time until i actually met a quokka and spent a lot of time with one and they are one of the friendliest most adorable creatures you can ever spend half an hour with. They, they're they a very cute little animal to spend time with. And I was very happy that I was able to get a quokka selfie with one in, in real life. And the last animal is the spectacled flying fox. Now, I know when the pack was announced, a lot of people did not know what a spectacled flying fox was, but previous experience familiarized me with them. I've seen them in real life and I've, I know that they're an endangered species thanks to deforestation and yeah they're, they're they're also a very beautiful bat and i think frontier really improved on the bats rig and animations very well with the spectacle flying fox but the scenery as well was phenomenal i love the island theme and the the great nods to polynesian culture it was it was beautiful and i love the i do love the new map as well i mean it's not the best map to build on but when you have the animals like this it's very fun the addition of viewing domes is also a great uh, bonus as well as breakage for the orangutan this pack is yeah it, it has to be my favorite i love all these animals very deeply and i use a lot of them so oceania pack number one on my list of dlcs let me know what you think of my personal list and um put your own ranking of all the dlcs in the comments down below as i really love to see them and yeah leave your thoughts in the comments down below like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see more we have crossed over into the 900 we're almost to a thousand and i cannot thank you guys enough for your support and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye